Suraj in terms of. So this is how you approach a Suraj. Break it down like that, think about the meaning. Even if it comes to different themes, it's fine. It's just the idea that you're making the double of the point. You're thinking about the message because you find that if you do this, then the message almost like it feels more connected. You almost like see more in each verse. If you see that, if you see that, like if you read it over and over, you'll see more things in, in it. No. Let's so have a quick start, inshallah, to our next surah, surah to tariq So this is going to be a Makki surah as well. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, surah al tariq But surah tariq is going to be a Makki surah. It's, it's, revealed, it's revealed towards the end of the Makki period. The end of the Makki period means that da'wah has been going on for a long time. Oppression is going to be has increased a lot. So it's towards the end of the Makki surah. So, so Allah begins the, the surah. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Was-sama'i wa-tariq. I'll tell you, was-sama'i. By the sky, the heavens. Sama'i is considered to be everything above you. Everything above you is considered to be sama'i. Even the sama'i you can't see. So, the example of the sama'i will include the sama'i. What is sama'i? All the ones you can't see beyond the observable uh, universe. So I'll take an oath by Wasamai wa Tariq. What does Tariq mean? What does Tariq actually mean? Okay. So remember what happens is that when you have a word, is that the word is based on root letters and from the root letters you get a verb and you get a noun. The noun, the verb helps you understand the noun, the noun helps you understand the verb. So is Tariq a noun or a verb? Noun or a verb? No. It's a noun. One of the clues you have is an L. If it's L then it has to be a noun. And L is the Tariq. The Tariq. So to understand what Tariq means, I must go to the, look up even the, the verbs. Because remember, um, there's a connection between a verb and a noun and noun. So we'll, we'll explain the connection now. So we've got the verb Tariq means to knock, to rap, to bang, to hammer strike. Because it's not actually a good dictionary because it's modern Arabic. If I go to Tariq, yeah, let's go to a classical dictionary, the beating, striking. This being the primary meaning. So the primary meaning means to knock. So you will say like, Tarak al-Bab. Man Tarak al-Bab, who's knocking on the door? Tarak means to knock, uh, to strike. We know the word more commonly, we know the word Tariq. Um, what is a Tariq? A path or a, a, way or path. a road. So what is the path and a way and the road to do with knocking, eating, striking? So number of meanings will be there is that a path is obviously a defined place you walk in. How is that place defined? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A path is a path. It's clear. So what's happened to everything inside the path? All the, those, the, the rocks and the the trees has been knocked away from their path. You with me? So in other words, it's been struck away, it's been cleared. And what happens on the footsteps? The footsteps strike the path all the time. So it's going to be like, you know, that's a connection of like how you link an, a verb knocking to a thing, a path. You with me? So in the mind, you, you're building an image around the, around the word. It's going to be Tarapa. Just look, at, look, at, look and see if, we can, if they have the actual word part in here. So we can think about how do we get there. So same as, the, the dictionary works the same as ours. We are just a, a little bit more like dense the writing. But it works the same. There's the 10 vowels at the beginning and the author just has all the, all the essence. Do you use the dictionary? You use this one on top here, but this is modern Arabic, so it's not so. Let's look at the modern Arabic one and see what they have here. Yes, oh, some, someone, STH something. Didn't feel writing out something, someone. 
Is it SO? Is the H? No. Tardic knocking. So a tardic is going to be a knocking, banging, striking, a nocturnal visitor. Nocturnal visitor. It sounds dubious, no? <laughs> tariq. Let's see if we can find Tariq here, what they say here. I like this dictionary because it gives us lots of different stuff. Where is Tariq here? Here is Tariq. Coming away, camera, anything come by night. The one who comes by night. That's called because he generally needs to knock at the door. The wayfarer. Now, so Tariq actually means someone who comes at night. When they explain this, is they, they explain that the Arabs, when they used to be travelers, and they generally used to travel at night. And if you, you travel in this, you don't travel in the midday. You travel early morning, but they come to probably put up your shade, you sleep. And then Asr time again, you, you're back traveling again because now it's the coolness of the day and you're traveling into the night because it's cool. And then you come and you settle at, at a place. But now what do you expect from the place that you're settling at? You need some food, you need some water, you need some comforts of life. So basically they used to, then uh, they used to either knock on people's doors or they used to like knock uh, stones together or knock pegs together to announce that they are visitors. You, know, you don't know if, you, if, if the families are at home at night, they don't know who's outside. So some of them will be making noise outside. So they knock either on the door, or they knock a stone together, knock pigs together. Then they go see and they say, oh, visitors, marhaban, ahla wa sahlan. You know, where are you from? Can we give you some water, food? So this is the idea of the, the knocking of the night is considered to be the, how Tariq becomes a night visitor. You with me? It doesn't mean directly. It means it based on who used to knock. Night travelers used to knock, and therefore a Tariq didn't mean a knocker, it meant a, a night visitor. Okay. Now, if you take that same meaning to the Sama, what appears at night? Stars. Okay, but the word Tariq is singular, so it refers to a, to the star. It refers to a star, so when, when, when the Quran says the star can mean one of two things. The star can mean a particular star, or the star can mean like the generic star. The star can mean a particular star, or it can mean like the generic star. Almost like referring to the, the plural of the stars in a, in a singular. Which star it is, the one I have different, uh, uh, different, uh, I don't know all the Arabic star names, but anyway, they give different opinions of different star names. Pleiades, and they get this, uh, a star called the Shahid as well. Apparently, the Prophet said there's a star called the Shahid. The Shahid appears at Maghrib time. So when you see the Shahid, you know it's time for Maghrib. This is the certain star called the Shahid. So anyway, there's different opinion with what, what, what star it refers to, but it refers to a, Either the star in terms of generically the star, the star that appears at night, or it can refer to a specific star, and the gives different opinions on what the, the star is. So it begins, I'll take an oath. Was Samai by the heavens, the skies, what Tariq, and the thing that knocks at night, which is the night visitor, which is stars that come at night, which is the star. You saw how we get from star, we get Taraka knock to star. You don't make the connection in like, what do you mean the night visitor? Like, what do you mean star? There's no star in the word Tariq. That's how it is. Because you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can name something by its description. Maybe it's a star. <laughs> <laughs> no. But the general people name Tariq of this, of the surah because comes the Quran, I don't know how much uh, research people do into names. Um, <laughs> no. What is this? It is like a number of different names they give. 
in the in the tafasir. Well, that's one of the things I was saying. Yeah. Because so what happens in, in, in language, you can often refer to something not by its name. You can refer to something by its quality. So this is the quality that this thing appears at night, therefore I call a star the thing that appears at night. You can refer to something by its uh, description. Now. By the heavens, and by the, the star, the night visitor. As if Allah knew that this Tariq thing is not so clear. Because Arabic readers are like, what is this Tariq? What night visitor Allah is speaking about? You know, is someone knocking up my door at night? Like, it's not clear for the Arabs who this is. So Allah says, and what will Adaraka? Adaraka is also difficult to say. But it's on the on the fourth bar. Do you look up the word da ra ya? Da ra ya means to know or to be aware. What's the quality of the fourth bar? Causation. So we put the af ala becomes ad ra. So what's the meaning of ad ra? To cause to know, to cause to be aware. To cause to know, to cause to be aware. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ And what will أَدْرَاكَ cause you to know? You the generic reader. What will cause you to know? ما What is it? What will cause you to know? What is الطارق, this night visitor? Allah uses sometimes adra and Allah uses sometimes yudri. Adra is past tense, yudri is present tense. If Allah uses yudri, Allah doesn't give the answer. If Allah uses adra, He gives the answer. Because adra is past the present tense. Past tense. Almost like I'm, you get to know and it's going to be in the past. What's going to make you know? What is a tariq? Allah says, An-Najmuthaqib. It is a Najm, the star. So now we know it's not a person. Like even the Tariq in terms of linguistically could have meant a person. But now Allah says, no, no, I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about a Najm. A Najm only has one meaning. It means the, the star. A Thaqib. What does Thaqib mean? So Thaqaba. What does Thaqaba mean? Always go back to the verb. If you want to understand the Islam, go back to the Verb. Remember, if you can see the, the verb, you can understand the ism. Thaqaba means to bore, to drill, to make a hole, to pierce, to puncture. What does that mean? It almost means like, say you have like a dark covering, like a dark tent, and you make a little hole in there. What comes at all? Like that piercing stream of light. But for the star, is almost like the, the heavens, a black canvas, and all the made holes in it. And lights are, light is coming through. So, a thaqib means that. It means that that piercing light, that bright light, piercing light coming through. And like it's otherwise dark, but it's an opening of light. So, we know it's a, a bright star. Then Allah says, In kullu nafsil lamma alayha hafil. Yeah. So the inno mean different things depending on how you read lamma. Meaning what? In our kira'a we say lamma. In other kira'a, actually most kira'a they say lamma. But we say lamma. This is our kira'a first. In, in can mean, what do you know in to be? In can mean if, what else can in mean? In can mean not if there is what coming in later. Illa. So in can mean if. In tadhab adhab. If you go, I will go. In can mean if. In can mean not if it is a illa coming later. Exception. Uh, in huwa illa wahyun yuha or something. It is not except wahyu. Okay, ask an in mean. In can mean indeed means in can be a light version of inna. 
in can be a light version of inna. Okay, so I must choose one because it can't be all three at one time. I must choose one. So do we? Which one do you think? So in our Kira'a, the Namma is the equivalent of Illa. Namma is the equivalent of except. Now, so therefore the in is going to be a negation. The in will be a negation because the Allah, the Lamma is going to be an and except. So in, so in is going to be a not. Not. Kullu nafsin. Every cell can see that's going to be a few things. I mean, we'll go off and we'll go off later. So it's going to be like the, all, the, each of soul. Every soul. Each soul. Every soul. Kul lamma. So I didn't in kullu nafsil lamma. Not every soul. Lamma. Except the, 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 not every soul except in, in, I mean like except that I lay her upon it the again back to what nafs I lay her is what half what's a half is Half is someone who preserves or protects something. Come to what it means now, inshallah. So, yes, and the, the, the Arabic first. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafid. Like there is not every soul except that upon it is a protector. Meaning, what does every soul have a hafid? Does it have a hafid? Every soul has a hafid. I come to hafid now. In the other Quran, it is lamma. It then reads, in kullu nafsin lama alayha hafid. If it's lama, then the in will be for light for inna. Light for inna, we say, mukhaffafa. Light for inna. Because then the lama can't mean except. Then it's going to be, indeed, every soul, lama, definitely alayha hafid. As a protector. So you can emphasize something with negation and then affirmation, or you can emphasize something by emphasis stuff. Meaning what? Allah negates and then Allah, Allah said there is not any soul, lama, except it as a protector. That's in our Quran. In other Quran it will be, indeed, every soul, lama, certainly has a protector. Okay, so you can see how the in changes meaning depending on how it comes later on, but they both have the same effect. They both have the effect of emphasis. So hafilah means to protect something. What does it mean? It means one of two things. When we say you make hifth of the Quran, what do we mean? What do we mean? We actually mean like you recorded it in your heart. You will record it in your, in your, your chest, in your memory. You recorded it. So hafil, to make hafil, one of the meanings actually is to, to like preserve something, uh, to keep a record of something. That's hafil. So if Allah is, so that's the one meaning. So who makes hifz of, of, our, of us, of every soul? Allah will be one, who else? Are the angels. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz, there is the not for every soul except that it has someone who is taking a record, preserving all of its actions. That someone can be Allah, can be the the angels as well. That's going to be the first meaning. What's the other meaning for hafiz? So the one thing is like a witness scribing down everything, right? We understand that one. What's the second meaning of hafiz? Protect. Protector. A protector. So there is not every soul, each soul, except that it has upon it a, a it has it has a protector upon it. Referring to the Allah or referring to the angels that actually can't hear you, Sheikh. They can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Hello. Thank you. Okay. 
So it can refer also to the protection of the of the angels. The one that the narration says that uh, you have as many protectors as you have joints. Generally, in the hadith says you have three hundred sixty joints. So you have three hundred sixty angels protecting you uh, all the time. You could understand both ways. Now. So that is the in kullu nafsi lamma alayha hafid. Falyanzur il insanu mimma khuliq. Falyanzur il insanu. What's happening with falyanzur? Yanzuri, what's happening there? Is it the ism or fi'il first of all? It's a fi'il. What type of fi'il? Maldi or mudari? Mudari. Which bab is done? First verb, it's yanzuru. Yanzuru. First verb, nazar yanzuru. Fa means so. What is lam they doing? So lam emphasis only has a fat on it. This is a lam of sukun. So I'm going to explain what this is. Lamul amr. So you know, fi al amr. A fi'al amr, you normally say, who do you give a fi'al amr to? The person in front of you. Undur, you one male look. Unduru, you many males or mixed look. Unduri, you one female look. Undurna, you many females look. But now I don't say, you must look, I must say, that person must look. But I'm not speaking to that person. So I want to say, that person should look. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to say amr for this. So then I'm only for the person you are speaking to. So if I want to say that person must look, I must use something called the lamul amr. The lamul amr. That lam there is the lamul amr. What's the lamul amr used for? When I want to say that someone, a third person, must do something. Like I want to give that, you know, that person should do that. Like let that person do that. No, it's it's direct. Um, the relation comes to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but the fa'il is coming after this inshallah. It's not the it's not tell that person. It's that person should. So al insanu human being should. It's not the, it's not amr directly. It's almost like me speaking and say your brother must go to the shop. I'm not saying you must tell him. I'm saying your brother must go to the shop. You understand? But if I speak to you directly, I say, go to the shop. Amr. If I say your brother goes to the shop, I say, your brother must go to the shop. Or let your brother go to the shop. It's, it's, a, it's a, like a command for a third person. So when you have a command for a third person, you add a lamb. If there's nothing in front of the lamb, like there's a fire in front of the lamb, if there's nothing in front of the lamb, you add a li. Li yandu. But if there's something under the lamb, you add a sukun on the lamb. Fal yandu. Okay, the lamb will have a li if nothing precedes it, and will have a sukun if. Something to see it. Falyangu. So I didn't say falyangu, and normally has a sukun at the end, but there's a kasar now because it's going through into the next word because we have two sukuns. So what the Adi translate falyangu? Or Adi translate falyangu ril insano? Let mankind look. So let mankind look. Let human beings look. Let man look. Mimma khuliqa. What is mimma two words? Min plus ma. Min from ma, that which khuliqa, he has been created. Majur. Falyanzuril insanu mimma khuliqa. So let human beings look to what they have been created from. Khuliqa. Often Allah takes people back to the creation. Why, why take people back to the creation? Which effect does the humility you come from humility. the top of the world, you were uh, you uh, to Lutfa, you were drop, you were alaqa, you do a piece of flesh. So why take you back to the story all the time? To humble you. One is to humble, yes. 
Once you say that now you you, you are mighty, you just look like drop. Maybe he created you the first time. He can recreate you in the resurrection. No. Also saying that he, you weren't always a big human being. You were a little drop. And Allah made you into this through various stages. And he can make you a second time. So going back to the beginning of human beings' origin, embryology, is part of the Quranic message to humble people and also to remind them that they have been created the first time and therefore they can be created a, a second time. It's not supposed to be like a science lesson. That's like second reaction. The more the lesson is a lesson about guidance. So let people look, let human beings look. Insan comes from which one? They say insan comes from Nisyan. To forget. It all reminds people. The uh, uh, says, they've all used the word insan there, which has a connotation of Nisyan, of forgetting. So let those forgetful human beings look. No. No. So because Maki is a lot of it will, like this, warnings will be to the places and there to humble them basically before Allah. Khulqa min ma in dafiqa. Khulqa, he has been created, mean, from water, a fluid, a liquid, dafiq. What does dafiq mean? Spurting forth or gushing forth. I well, doesn't say it explicitly here, but most, most of us don't say it refers to male sexual fluid at the time of ejaculation. So Allah is like almost like, like humbling people. You come from that. You come from that act from water gushing forth. It could linguistically also refer to the female as well. Because Allah doesn't mention specifically the female also has fluid as well. Um, so obviously people don't come from a fluid. But people come from uh, the act at the time of the fluid. In terms of the female, obviously the male, what I'm saying is like, so obviously how babies work is the male sperm, but the female egg. Um, so the female witness is not linked to an egg, it was linked to the act of that, um, the act of what you call it, conception. Yakhruju min bain is sulbi wa taraib. Yakhruju. This fluid comes forth min bain is sulbi wa taraib. So this year, there's like lots of different understandings about this. Um, and I don't have the final answer, but uh, still reading inshallah. But sulb is referring to, generally referring to your loins. So your loins are, I think your loins are like above your hips and just like your lower back basically. Is your loins. When you think of loins, what do you think of? You think of procreation. <laughs> what was your laughing about? Jumps. Jumps. <laughs> Jumps. <laughs> Jumps. <laughs> Jumps. <laughs> no. Loin <laughs> chops. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about humans now. <laughs> When you think about the loins of a human, what do you think about? You think about the idea of procreation. The loins of people. But I think the loins is, is, is from the, this lower region here. What taraib? Taraib has many meanings. Taraib. So if you look at uh, taraib here, taraib comes from the word tariba. Tariba is the single and taraib is the plural. Most of the of the Mufassirun will say that Taraib is going to be the, the ribs, the front collar and the ribs. Um, but there's many they say the, the part of the breast which is the place of the collar or the necklace, so this necklace part here, um, or the bones of the breast, or the bones that are between the collarbone and the I don't know what that is, or the part of the breast or the chest or next to the collar bones or the part which is between the two breasts and the collarbones, or the four ribs on the right-hand side of the chest and the four ribs on the left, or the two arms and two legs and two eyes. <laughs> so the point is, is, is that the taraib is, is between something. <laughs> Most of the scholars say it's the front part, 
this part of you, but some scholars say actually it's the pelvic area as well. So what I'm saying is not an exact scientific word, because it's like almost like one of those ayahs where they say there's a mistake in the Quran. They say, you know, sperm doesn't come from the ribs. But the idea is that the sperm becomes from this midsection of yours. The idea is that it gushes forth from this midsection of yours. So that's the, so that's the first of what the word means. The second thing is, who does it refer to? So some of them say, this is referring to the male only. Between his loin and between his, his front part, that is where the gushing takes forth. Then some people come with scientific stuff and say, to ejaculate, you need like, I don't know what, all these muscles. And if you have a spinal injury, then you can't. Uh, because obviously it's a, it's a physical action that, is a, that, that requires muscle, muscles and things. So uh, some people might go down that road when they have a discussion about this. Ah, yeah. But they first do this, the part between the stone parts. Then some ulama will say that sul is more commonly used for males and taraib is more commonly used for females. Meaning what? That the sul is referring to the male and the, and the taraib is referring to the females. Meaning what? Ya khruju, this, uh, this fluid, sexual fluid, whether male or female, from the males it comes from the sul, from the loins. And from the females it comes from the um, uh, some front area with the pelvic area. Some people might argue this, like, I, to be honest, I don't know enough about the bi biological uh, research on it. It requires more research. But the point all I'm making is not like a sign. You can see the words, Taraib itself has like a lot of different names. So it's difficult to pin down exactly what it means. And secondly, also, this ikhtilaf, whether it's referring to the male or, and the female. So the verse is not trying, what I'm saying is the verse is not trying to be a biology textbook. The, the, the verse is telling you that you come from a gushing piece of liquid that comes from a person's body from this midsection, and that is your that is your beginning. You come from someone's body from the inside and you gush out of the liquid, and that is your, your beginning. And so the verse is more about the uh, that idea as opposed to saying that, you know, like a diagram of, of biology uh, and so on. So obviously some people will like, some people will oppose it based on how they understand the words to mean, and some will justify it based on how they understand the words to mean. But for me, it doesn't really either way, it's like it's okay because the words itself are not like precise biological words in this in this case. Now the point was to tell human beings they have an insignificant beginning. That was the whole point. You come from a water that just gushes forth from someone's body, someone's midsection, and you have an insignificant beginning. And Allah says, Innahu ala la qadir birlihi Allah. Upon Raja'ihi, what's Raja'i? Raja'i mean? His return. Raja'i is going to be the master of Raja'i. Upon his return. Who's return? Human beings return. In son's return, he is la, he is definitely. That you can see that that, that lam, that's the lamu the the lamu emphasis fathan. He is definitely qadir. Qadir means what? All able, all powerful, all able. When is he all able to do this? Last verse, inshallah. Yawma tubalas sarair. When will Allah do this? Okay, before I go, go there. The fact that Allah created you the first time is basically evidence that Allah can create you the second time. Therefore, Allah is mentioning your creation the first time to say that He is able to return you again to your form the second time. And when will He do the second time? The first time was when? When there was ma in dafik yakhujumin baini sulbi wa taray. That's the first time. When the second time? Yawma tubalu, yawma tubala saray. On the day that tubala, what's tubala? Like what ibtila? What's ibtila mean? Test, tubula, will be tested. What will be tested? Asarair. What's asarair? Sir. Sir, the secret, asarair, asarair, the secrets. Meaning what? What will be hidden will be manifested and will be investigated. All the secrets will come to forth and will be, will be tested. Barakallah, we'll end there, inshallah ta'ala. We'll carry on next week with this. Surah, again, my, I urge you to, if you haven't memorized the surah, memorize it. 
And if you have memorized it, refresh it. Use it in Salah this week. Make it part of your Quranic vocabulary, your Quranic surahs. Barakallah. Wassalamu alaikum. Oh, before I go, just two announcements. First announcement is that the Etikaf program will go, registration will go live this week if you want to register. It's a 10 day program at Sikhman Road for the last 10 days of Ramadan. If you want to sleep over, that's when you must register that. If you want to attend the programs, no registration needed. Males and females can come anytime. No registration. It's an open masjid program. You come for all the programs, no problem. But if you want to sleep over, you need to register. There are like very limited spaces. I'm getting lots of SMSs. When is it coming? When is it opening? So I'm going to give the Mizan students one day, 24 hours to register before I send it public. You have a 24 hour window of VIP access to register. The cost is obviously if you can afford it, but the cost is 700 Rand for the 10 days because it's a bed and breakfast and supper. Uh, it's fully catered. So you get your suhoor, you get your iftar, you get, you get everything there, you just bring yourself. So it's a fully catered experience, um, uh, inshallah. And the last thing also is that we, we try to reduce the cost because it normally costs about one and a half thousand in a person if you buy all the meals. So we try to reduce the cost by asking people to sponsor an iftar. So three have been sponsored so far. If you'd like to sponsor an iftar, you can. Let Nasri know or part of an iftar. It's for 75 people. That's a big part of whatever you're making. Um, but if you want to sponsor it, or maybe your family wants to sponsor an iftar, you can let Nasri know, inshallah ta'ala. Because we try to get all 10 meal sponsors so the cost is not so expensive. Um, because part of the cost is obviously all the suhoor and, uh, and we also hire catering staff. So we hire five catering staff that sleep there for 10 days and we pay them to sleep there. Um, to serve people, so people can just have a nice service and not wash up, not do anything, you just focus on your ibadah. Um, so we're comfortable for those making etikaf, but it costs a bit of money to get them there and so on. And also we hire a tent for all the catering and tables, chairs, everything, so it's a nice experience, uh, inshallah. So if you'd like to sponsor a meal or part of a meal, you can let us read now, inshallah. And if you want to register, 